Foundry is the best framework to write, test and deploy your Solidity contracts. And in this video, we will go over how to write and test an NFT contract. My name is Hakeem and I'm a Web3 engineer at eBay. My mission is to teach you Web3 development. So let's begin. First, make sure you have the following prerequisites installed now, which I'll show on screen. Once you have those things set up, simply run forge init foundry nft then cd into it oh, cd into foundry open up your code editor of your choice i'll do visual studio code so code dot so this is the basic setup for your foundry project as you can see we have the git modules here which is where the sub modules go we have a github folder lib script source and test now, the first thing you want to do is run the following command. This will install the Soulmate and Open Zeppelin contracts into your project. And you'll see them in the lib folder here. So we already have the Forge standard library here, which contains uh, a bunch of utility functions for us to use. The Open Zeppelin contracts and also the Soulmate ones, which is what we're going to use to inherit for our NFT contract. So let's close that for now. Uh, we already have a counter.sol here, which we don't want. Let's just uh, keep this here. We'll change this to 0.8. We're going to import a couple files. We've imported ELC721 from Soulmate and a library called strings.sol from OpenZeppelin. Let's rename this contract to NFT. We're going to inherit from ELC721. And the first thing I want to do is not this, but I want to instantiate the token ID. So uint 256 public current token ID. Now in Solidity, a constructor is a unique method that gets called before deployment. And we need to pass through a couple parameters to it. So constructor, the first thing we want is a string of memory and another string, also memory, underscore symbol. And you'll see why in just a moment. Now we want to pass these variables into our ELC721 constructor. So simply just like so. We don't want this. By the way, if you're curious as to what this is here, uh, this is um, GitHub Copilot, which is a AI tool we can use to rapidly speed up your development processes and I highly recommend using it if you haven't tried it already. Our first and only real function will be the mint, uh, mint method. So we'll have a function mint2. It's going to expect an address recipient and it's going to be public so anyone can call it. It's going to be payable and it's going to return uint256 and you'll see why in a moment uint 256 new token id equals current token id plus plus so the new token id will be the current id which starts from zero add one so the token id will never start from zero it'll start from one and then we actually call the safe mint method on our contract so the safe mint method is a ELC721 method to actually mint the NFT to our user or recipient in this case. And then we return the new token ID. We do need to implement one more method, but we don't actually care about it too much for our tests. Um, all this is, is a view function that simply returns back to us the ID of a given NFT. This is just to satisfy the fact that we're inheriting from the ELC721 contract. Now, that was very simple, but the unit test will get a little bit more intense. First, let's change the name to uh, nft.sol, just so it's consistent. And then we're going to rename this test file in here to nft.t. So this is how, um, this is just a name convention in Foundry for your test files. And in this test file, we're going to rename this to NFT. And we're going to change this to zero NFT. Perfect. Let's get rid of these, this code here. 
So we're going to be writing unit tests. And if you're not familiar with unit testing, it's just a process of testing the logic of individual functions. And there's a common way of doing this. So you want to start off with a range and then you want to act and you want to assert. Now, what the hell do I mean by this? Now, the first thing we want to do is a range. So we want to set up our tests and there's a couple of variables I want to instantiate, but there's one in particular that I want to briefly explain. So we're going to use a library called standard storage. Now this is a, this is a library uh, in Foundry that we can use to manipulate the storage of the EVM. And it's extremely useful for unit testing. Uh, the next thing we want to do is define the contract itself or an instance of it. And then I'm going to define some more variables here. So we'll have uh, address public contract. So address public recipient address. And we'll also have one for the um, for the value. So because we're using this paper function, we're going to need to pass through some sort of value when we call mint two. So let's have a uint two fifty six public value. Now notice we're not instantiating these yet. That will happen in the setup function. So just below this, we'll have function setup. And we'll have a NFT equals new NFT. This would be a NFT name. And then we'll have the symbol, we'll just call it sim. Perfect. And now we're going to instantiate these variables. So contract address. On line 20 here, we are typecasting the NFT variable, which is of type NFT, the contract itself, to the address. And then we'll do the same thing for the recipient, but it'll be not this, but one. So just some random address. And then the value we'll put as one ether. Okay, so you may have noticed that I have removed this error here. Now, the reason why that was happening for me was because of VS Code. But if it's happening for you still, and you're not using VS Code, you may need to update your uh, mappings or remappings so what I did was made this remappings.txt file here, and then your code editor will actually read these imports from this file, and then it should be able to detect where these imports are coming from. So I'll include a link to this um, in the description below. So the first function we're gonna have will be called test mint two. This will be public. And then we're gonna simply call this mint two method over here. And remember, it's payable, so we need to pass through some sort of value. Uh, so it'll be NFT, which is the NFT instantiation here, dot mint to, and then curly braces. Uh, the value will be value, and we pass through the recipient address here. Hit save, and then we can run the test, and it passes. What about a real contract that supports or doesn't support ERC721? I've prepared a snippet here. So we can actually define another contract outside our test. Now this is a receiver contract that's inheriting ERC721 token receiver. And all this is doing is simply checking whether or not this contract can actually receive an ERC721 or an NFT. But to test this, let's make a function or test uh, NFT or ERC721 receiver public. And then we we'll want to instantiate a new uh, instance of this receiver contract here. So receiver, receiver equals new receiver. And then we're going to mint to this contract. Yep. Now we're going to use the forge standard library, which is defined here to do a little bit of manipulation. So below this, we can do uint256 slot equals standard storage dot. And then we can do, whoops, not dot. 
we can do, uh, so now we can target the address itself. We can get the signature of the NFT dot balance of selector. Now that we have the signature of this function, we can pass through an argument with key and pass through the address of the receiver contract and return back to us with find. So essentially this is just a query, kind of like what you have in um, you know databases. So we're querying uh, the standard storage. Well, we're using the standard storage library to query our contracts, get the signature of the balance off function and pass through the receiver contract address here to see, to return back to us the slot where it's stored on our contract. Now we can get the balance as a unit 256 by typecasting. We can use the VM library to actually load the value of the slot that we just received here. The first thing we want to do is do vm.load and pass through the contract address that we're trying to get the value from and then pass through a bytes32 typecast of the slot. And then we need to do abi.encode to actually do the conversion. So we've returned the slot from storage and we are getting the binary representation using abi.encode and we're converting that into bytes32. Now the bytes32 needs to be converted again into UN256 Again, because they occupy the same space, we can do this. And we are doing all of this from the actual contract address itself uh, using vm.load. So now we have the balance, we can assert that the, oh, we can assert equal, that the balance is equal to one. Hit save, let's run the test, forge test. In fact, we'll, we'll add some robustity into this. Okay, I did a typo somewhere. Okay, it's a standard store. Now let's test some unhappy paths. So beneath this, we'll do function test. So this test fail here is a reserved keyword. So Foundry will already know that this test should fail. Now we can do nft.mint2. And let's mint to this address. And let's do another one. So function test fail, mint to zero address. So now we're gonna mint to a zero address, which is a infamous address in Solidity for, whoops. So this would simply just be nft.mint2. Um, so here we are passing through a value, though it doesn't matter. Um, so we don't want this to happen, therefore it will fail. Now, what would happen if the max supply is reached? Well, we need a test case for that as well. So let's call it function test fail max supply reached. Now we're gonna use the standard store library again to manipulate some storage. So again, we do unit 256 store equals standard store. Uh, then we're gonna target the contract address and we're going to select the current token ID. Now, I'll just remind you, this is this value over here. And we're going to return it back to us. So this is getting the storage value of the current token ID, public variable. And then we're going to get the bytes32 representation of this storage. So uh, bytes32 to store. Now we're gonna mark the maximum supply. So bytes 32, uh, mark current token ID. Again, bytes 32. And we're gonna abi.encode 10,000. We're gonna store this value into our VM. So vm.store contract address. and then the location and the new mock current token ID. And then we'll try and mint. So now if we do nft.mint2, this test should fail. So let's test these. I mean, it should pass. Ah, 
forgot to add public, so let me add public to each of these tests. Cool. Let's do it again. Right, so these all passed. Now remember, they're passing, but they're actually failing under the hood because of this test fail keyword here. There's one last test I want to show. This is another feature of the VM library where we can manipulate a contract's bytecode. So what we can do is do function uh, test fail uh, unsupported contracts. So we can do vm .h, pass through our contract address. And then in the second parameter, we can pass through a bytes32 string. We'll just call it unsupported contract. This can be anything you want. And then we're going to try and mint to this address. So nft.mint2. Oh, again, I forgot to add public. Perfect. And there we go. Now you've seen Foundry's powerful unit testing features. Specifically, Forge is the name of the feature that does it. But this is only scratching the surface of what Forge can actually do. Thank you for watching. That's all for this video, and I'll see you soon.